amen. You're tuning in by way of Facebook Live to our Bible class. We're so glad that you have took the time to look in on us here in Ecclesia Temple Apostolic Church. We're located at 309 McGregor Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45219. And I am the pastor here, District Elder Derek Sorrells. And the order of our services is our Sunday school starts at 10 a.m. and it goes through to 11.15 a.m. Sunday morning worship starts at 11.45 and our Sunday night Bible class starts at 6 p.m. and goes through to 7 p.m. Then our Wednesday night Bible class, which you're tuning in tonight, we're so thankful for that you're doing that, is from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Then we have Thursday night prayer here for one hour. It's from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And we invite you, amen, to, amen, if you would like to join those services, amen, you can contact us through our, amen, go to our Ecclesia Temple web, website. That is EKKTAC.com. Our Ecclesia Temple website, again, and you're hearing this, EKK. TAC.com. We also have uh, where we put all of our recorded Bible classes and our Sunday worship on our church YouTube channel, which you can go out to YouTube and put in Ecclesia Temple Apostolic Church, and our channel will pop up, and then you can look through the listing and the categories of services, Amen. and you click on them and start viewing them at your pleasure. But we like for you in your comments, if you like, or you have questions about what is being said, type it in the comment section there, amen, and we'll review those comments, and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. If you would like for us to reach out in prayer, send your prayer requests in those comments, and we'll pray for whatever that request is. Also, we will ask you to go out and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Become a subscriber. We're trying to get a thousand subscribers on that channel. Far from that right now, but we know God will move and we will fulfill that number. So tonight, we're glad that you tuned in. We have something from the Lord that I think is very relevant for the time we live in. It's basically a question which I think we should ask ourselves as believers in this hour. Tonight's Bible class, I want to make this, bring this to your, to know before we go any farther. It's a two-part Bible class, two-part series. So the first part we'll be looking at, it will be titled, You Can't Get to Heaven Living Like Hell. Amen. You Can't Get to Heaven Living Like Hell. We have to understand, God has laid out all the requirements to get to heaven in this book, the Holy Scriptures, amen, 66 books are very specific and explicit on what you need to get to heaven. Why is that something we need to understand? Because there will be no opportunity for you to make an excuse for not making it in when the rapture comes. Because God has given us since the cross since Jesus died on the cross, he has given us the foundation. He has given us the pathway. It's called holiness. Amen. And he showed us through his example what we need to do to be able to see him one day face to face. You can't get to heaven living like hell. And I think a lot of people are confused about, you know, going to heaven. And we're going to try to help you understand God means what he said, and he said what he meant, and he had it written down by 40 holy men that were inspired by the Holy Ghost so that you can have the opportunity to know how to get to heaven so there would be no gray area. The second part of Bible class is, saints, what we do, what should we do when we're dealing with trouble in our lives? That's the second part. Hope we'll be able to get to that tonight. What should saints do? What did the scripture tell us to do when trouble comes? So we're going to talk about that. Now I want to start out with an opening statement tonight to bring in the audience to where we're going with this. 
You can't get to heaven living like hell. Now, I have been I'm very observant. I am fortunate to be able to, amen, have been in the older generation apostolics and now living in the new apostolic. And that is a privilege that I, amen, honor that the Lord has allowed me to see. And so I know the way that apostolics live in the, as I can say, in the days of my grandfather, my father, my mom and them, they had a uniqueness about them. And today, it's very hard to distinguish those that call themselves holy in the world. I'm, I'm just going to lay it out there that way. There's really no demarcation. There's no difference today in what people saying that they're believers or holiness or apostolic than what I see that the world is doing because I think the spirit of the Antichrist is deceiving people, making them think, well, you can see Jesus if you do, if you let down here, you let down there, you let, but Jesus can't lie. Jesus cannot go away from what he laid down in these books. He cannot go away from what he has told us to do. I want to say this in my opening. When I was a young lad and looking up to those in church, I would hear my grandfather, Bishop E.W. Young, say, in the last days, who would be still standing for righteousness? When he said that, I would ponder that. I said, well, I don't know. The saints are going to stay on the fire line because that was one of his favorite songs. Keep on the fire line. You know, and I just was bred with that, that the saints are going to continue to be Saints, be apostolic, be holy, keep on the fire line. Yeah. Don't change. Yeah. And when he said that, back then I really didn't not understand what he was saying or if this would really happen. Because when I looked at the holiness saints back then, they were very strong in their faith. Yes. They would sing songs like, I came over here to serve the Lord until I die. Until I die. Mm -hmm. Nothing but Jesus, 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 Jesus. But today, some of these same saints, I don't have to see, to me, have looked like they have forgotten or have been let down their stance and their standard of holiness. In the Bible, Paul, in his ministerial epistles, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and, and Titus, mm -hmm. Paul really hammers Timothy in and saying, hold on. Stay firm in sound doctrine. Yes. Don't be deceived by new, upcoming, this is okay stuff. He kept emphasizing that yes. to them young preachers. And I kept saying, well, that's why Paul did that. Because Paul was kind of propagating to them what was going to happen in this time. Yes. Though he was talking about their time there because he was about ready to be uh, uh, kill yes. El Nero's chopping block. He's getting ready to get his head taken off. So he was preparing them. Stay steadfast. Stay unmovable. Always abounding in the works of the Lord. Don't change your position. Yes. This is what I'm trying to tell the saints. That they saints, don't change your position. I don't care who say it don't take all that. Who say uh we don't have to do it like that anymore. Who say you in bondage? The same requirements that God laid down for Abraham, the same requirements God laid down for those in the days of Jesus Christ, the same requirements that he laid down in the 60s, 50s, 30s, 20s, 1800s, 1700s, same requirements is the same requirements we have to do today. Now let's, let's look at that. Let's look at some of those requirements. You cannot, I'm going to say, you cannot call yourself a follower of Christ following the world. It won't work. You can't identify yourself as a believer when you allow the world to influence you. He said, let this mind that was in Christ Jesus be also in you. You should have a mind like Christ Jesus. Now, I have never seen Read anywhere in the Bible where Jesus was a partaker 
of worldly things. Yeah. Won't find it. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Ever. He never associated himself with all, with worldly things. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say what I'm believing because he did sit down with the sinners yeah. in them, but that was for influencing them to be like him, yeah. not for them to influence him to be like them. Say it, say Come on, somebody. Amen, amen. Let's go, let, let's look at some things. I want to back up what I say because I don't have to worry about it because it's in the word of God. These are some of the scriptures that tell the saints you must be different from the world. You must be set apart. Just praying and saying you love God will not get you into heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Just praying and say you love God is not enough. Amen. God is looking for you to look like him. Yes. Come on here. Because remember, we talked about this. The hypocrites and the Pharisees prayed. Because Jesus told them they prayed with a loud voice to be seen, but those prayers were not being effective yeah. because they didn't have the right motive. Mm -hmm. You got people praying to God with the wrong motive. Praying don't make you know God. Yeah. Amen. A little baby can pray, but he don't know what he's saying. That's right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Praying don't make you know God. What makes you know God is the sacrifices that you do in order to put your flesh under subjection. That's a, that's a sacrifice. Because your flesh always will challenge your spirituality. Yes, it will. The flesh is always warring, warring, warring against your spirit, right. especially with your righteous spirit. But let's go here deep. Hallelujah. Yes. 2 Corinthians mm -hmm. 6, 17. These scriptures tell you what Jesus required. Now, this is one thing you should stop listening to the folks. Well, that was in the Old Testament. <laughs> Look, the Old Testament is for our learning. Without the Old Testament, you wouldn't know what the New Testament meant. Yes. Come on. The Old Testament had to be done so we could understand the righteousness of God under the dispensation of grace. Amen. The Ten Commandments were given so that you would know what you're supposed to do under grace. Yeah, yeah. You don't cancel out the Old Testament just because it's not an eye for an eye. Mm -hmm. You don't deny the law just because you're under grace. Amen. Just, what did Jesus say? Jesus said that, he said, I didn't come to destroy right. that law. Right. I come to fulfill well, it. Yeah. Yeah. Man. I'm showing you what you got to do to be what it says you should be. Yeah, that's come on, somebody. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 6. 6 to 17. Yes, sir. It reads, Wherefore, come out from among them. What? Come out from among them. Come on here. And be ye separate. Come on. Saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now, somebody got to understand that. Look, the Bible says this to us, Sister Christian. Our body, when we give it to God, becomes a, the temple of God. Yes, do y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. Did he not say that? Do you not know that your body is a temple of God? Now, y'all know God is not going to dwell in a what? Unclean, unclean temple. No, he's not. Is that right? That's right. Because God will not be a partaker of an unclean person. Mm -hmm. This is why people are fooling themselves if they're sinning and still think they saved. Yes. God didn't already left you. Yeah. He already pulled himself away. Because once you start being a partaker of sin, God is no longer with you anymore. You have to get that temple cleaned up before he'll come back. Now, I'm going to show y'all something. Y'all, read that again so we can put that in our memory. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 reads, Yes. Wherefore, come out from among yes. them, and be ye separate, mm -hmm. saith the Lord, and Do touch what? not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. You cannot run with the world hand in hand no. and say you say. Can't do it. Come on, somebody. Amen. It will not work. And you got saints doing that. Instead of we influencing them, they influencing us, yes. pulling us out of the church. Because we are catering to our flesh. Yes. Yes. See, when you run with worldly people, you cater to your flesh. Your spirituality go out the door. Yes. Come on, Holy Ghost. Talk. You cannot. Being worldly events, you can't run with world. You know what's going to send a lot of folks to hell? They worldly family members. Mm -hmm. right Come on, somebody. 
They're your biggest problem. You run around trying to, well, this is my cousin, this is my niece, and they don't want to live safe, but you saying you say running with them. And when you really look at your life and be fair about it, you stop paying attention to God and pay more attention to what they want you to do. Yeah. Come on, y'all know right. we do that. Yeah. If you're not careful, the world will pull you away from who you should be in God. Amen. Now watch this. Le Leviticus 20, 26. God said what he said. He meant what he said. He did, and he ain't changed what he said. Deacon is little. Yeah. God ain't changed what he said. Amen. We try to change it. Because today, like my mom said, we want a watered down doctrine. People don't want you to tell them you can't do this mm -hmm. and be saved. They want, I'm going to say this. Lord help me in here tonight, but I'm going to say it anyway. Because the Bible told me to cry loud and spread out. Amen. We got some sanctified folks that's doing the Michael Jackson in their poor pit. Dancing. Got all kind of worldly music. But they say they holy and sanctified. And these are some people I grew up admiring. They done went back. They sitting there cheering this guy out there doing the splits. Michael Jackson moonwalking. And they, <laughs> I say, now them folks come out of Bethlehem. Ain't nobody talking to me. Deceived. Because you know why? They done been around worldly folks so long, they don't even feel the guilt where they are now. They didn't forgot whom they were. Mm -hmm. They didn't become so worldly, it don't even affect them that they not in, in, when they're in an environment of unrighteousness. Because mm -hmm. they fit in. Yeah. When you fit in, you don't, it don't bother you. Yeah. You can go, next year then you're going to be going to sit at the bar and drink and say, I'm still saved. And the Bible explicitly tells us, amen, no drunker will what? Yeah. Have no inheritance in the kingdom of God. You better hear what I'm telling you. Yeah. The devil is deceiving y'all. Y'all better get back to what you used to be and not let your worldly friends trick you by saying it don't take all that. Well, we was in bondage. It's good some of y'all was in bondage because it kept you under control. Yeah. Now you loose, you just doing any and everything. You ain't even got no consciousness for sin no more. This is what I'm seeing with a lot of the church folks I grew up with. I'm saying on Facebook. Y'all ain't got no conscience for sin anymore because you've been so duped by the enemy that you out there with the world just as hand, hand in hand, holding shoulder to shoulder with them. And you don't even know what wrong is anymore because you're so infiltrated with it. But the Bible said this. Paul said he going to send a spirit of delusion in the land where they'll believe a lie. And be damned. Yes, yes, yes. I see it firsthand in this generation. Folks I grew up with, I thought was saved, holy. Ain't a bit more holy than this poor pit. Or that, I better say something like that carpet on the ground. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, Leviticus right. 20. I'm talking good. I, they, I really, the Lord told me to say it. Because I'm tired of folks perpetrating. Y'all ain't saved. Doing all that worldly stuff. Y'all didn't grow up in Bethlehem doing that. You didn't never see Bishop bring no dances on no stage. Yeah, he didn't have that foolishness. Messed up. Leviticus 20, 26. Leviticus 20, 26. And ye shall be holy unto me. Well. For I the Lord am holy. Yeah. And have severed you from other people. Did what? And Severed you from other people. Cut you off from other people. And? That you should be mine. That you should be mine. God's people don't hang with worldly folks. Amen. That's right. Because the Holy Spirit will cut you off from unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. What fellowship does righteous have with unrighteous? It's all in one. They can't mix. Amen. That's right. You can't be saying you say and your friends, majority of your friends are worldly. Mm -hmm. That don't work. You ain't saved at all. You're not saved. You're fooling yourself. How in the world do you think you're going to heaven living like hell? I'm going to say it again. Amen. How in the world do you think you're going to heaven living like hell? Leviticus 10 and 10. Let's look at it again. I'm breaking this home. Jesus has always required us to be different. 
holy, separated. He's always required that. Mm -hmm. My God, in the name of Jesus, speak, Holy Ghost. Leviticus 10 and 10? Yes. And that ye may put difference between holy and unholy. Yes. And between unclean and clean. Read on, 11, please. And that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them now, by the hand of Let me of show you something. Deacon Little, this is what's happening. How are we going to be an example to the generation coming up behind us if we ain't doing it? Wow. If we ain't living holy the right way, how the generation behind us, Lady Sorrell, going to know anything about holiness? Right. Why do you think this generation don't care nothing about the church anymore? Mm -hmm. Why do you think they don't care? Because y'all ain't live nothing in front of them. Say it, say it. Call yourself saved out there doing all kind of damnable things. They're going to say you say, parade that in front of your children. Y'all ain't talking to me. Your children ain't looking at you to be holy. He said, be holy, make a difference. When I, you know, holy people, when they come in the room with sinners, sinners clear out like roaches when light come on. Y'all ain't talking to me. Roaches don't like light. The old apostolics, when they walk in the room, folks go the other way. I don't want nothing to do with them. That holy, holy stuff, I won't talk to them. Won't talk to them. But today, the oh, that's my buddy. Come on in, sit down with us. Let's have a conversation together. Mm -hmm. They don't run from you because you ain't got no life. Amen. You're not different. Amen. You fit in. Make a difference mm -hmm. between holy and unholy. That's what sanctification is. And then you're going to try, well, I want my kids saved. Well, how are your kids going to be saved when you're living like the devil? Say it. Somebody Say it. need to talk to me mm -hmm. again. That's right. How are you being an example when they see you doing everything? You're fooling yourself. First Peter, mm -hmm. thank you, Jesus. 15, 115. You have to be different. You have to set an example. If you saw yourself a child of God, people ought to see that in your life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. First Peter yes, 1 Peter 1, 15. Come on. But as he which hath called you is holy, yes. so be ye holy mm -hmm. in all manner of conversation. Mm -hmm. If you wouldn't say that, mm -hmm. he all that has called you to be holy is holy. That's God. Jesus. Mm -hmm, amen. Mm -hmm. So you should be holy in all manner of conversation. Your conversation should be about Jesus and Jesus and Jesus. Yes. And Jesus again and Jesus. Come on, somebody. Your conversation should be about a bunch of worldly stuff. What's the next pop song coming out? Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Why are you worried about that? You ought to be worried about where you stand with God. Because one thing I'm going to show you. Let me show you something. The Lord told me to keep iterating until somebody here. In the day of the flood, the sins of the world had got so bad. Mm -hmm. The Bible said it went up to the heaven and it stunk in God's nostril. That's a metaphor. That it was so bad that it was just messy. That it smelled like dung. It was messy. Now, I want to bring it to this relevant. Is this a mess generation we living in? These people are messed up. They pushing everything. If I see on TV one more it is an abomination. If you can't procreate, you ain't no man. Y'all better hear me in here. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Amen. That's right. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth with children. Two of the same species can't 
can't do that. Ain't nobody helping me in here. But it's propagating. It's all over. Now they're trying to blend. See, y'all got to be careful. This is what you tell you. Now they're trying to blend the men and the women's sports together. The women can play with the men. Y'all know it. Be, that's, that's going somewhere. I told y'all. I said, for long, they're going to be advertising suits with men wearing skirts. They out now. Men wearing skirts with a top. If you cannot, let me, if you cannot see in the murder, the crime, the, the disobedient in children, there is no standard of law being emphasized nowhere. Even them in government is letting down. Yes, yeah. The world is getting worse and worse and worse. Do you know what that's a sign of? Just like it was a sign in the days, of the, as the Bible said, as it was in the days Noah. of Noah. Mm -hmm. So shall it be in the coming of the Lord. The Lord is getting ready to come back. Come. Listen, and I'm going to tell you the greatest telltale, the church is falling away. The people in the church don't have no desire to come to church. The people in the church don't have no desire to live holy. Say it, say it. Now I know I'm talking right. I can't even tell church people hardly anymore from sinners. They blend in so much. We have took on the image of the world. The world is split in because from the pulpit we have told y'all, ain't nothing wrong with that. You okay? That's where it started up here. We let down the standard. Now people are doing whatever they want. Now let me show you something. The last time that happened, God destroyed the world. For the Bible says in that chapter in Genesis, he said, every man, I think it's 67 chapter, every man did what was right in their own eyes. That's what you got today. You can't tell people they're wrong. I'm not talking right, Sister Brandon. Yes, Everybody tell you, I'm okay. I'm okay. How do you think you're okay? Well, I look at Betty. She go to church, and I don't do what Betty do. Betty out here doing all kind of stuff. And she go to church. Well, that's your problem. Stop looking. Jesus didn't tell you to look at Betty. He said, look at me. Amen. That's the problem with a lot of y'all. Stop looking at them and look to the one that's the righteous. Yes, yes. Stop looking at people. People are going to send you to hell. Get your eyes off of people. Get your eyes on your Savior. Because when it gets down to the bottom line, it's your Savior that has the Go, no, go, whether you're going to heaven or hell. Your people and your friends don't. Your friends ain't got no heaven and hell to put you in, but you celebrate them, and you're knowing the one that do. Yes. How can you go to heaven living like hell? It won't work. You got to line yourself up with the word. You got to be holy because he that called you, that brought you out of darkness, into this marvelous life, saved your soul, made you whole, Amen. is the one that called you. Amen. You got to live like the one that has picked you out. Now, this is a celebratory thing you want to think about. Out of all your sinful cousins, you're the one that's trying to be saved. Now, that's an honor. Mm -hmm. yes, it is. is that right, Sister Brand? That's an honor. All the folks you know that ain't living nothing in your family, but you try. That ought to inspire you to do the right thing. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Holiness or hell. Now you can hear my grandfather's. It's holiness. It ain't no gray area in that. No. It's holiness or hell. You choose. You choose. God is calling for holiness. Holiness without no man should see the Lord. Am I talking right? Amen. First Peter. Uh, six, did you read 16 also? I'll right now. Mm -hmm. Verse 16, 1 Peter 1 yes. 16. Yes. Because it is written, Come on. Be ye holy, for yes. I am holy. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is written, that's in Leviticus. Be ye holy, uh -huh. for I am holy. You can do you know, do you know, no unrighteousness will presented, be presented to God or presented in his presence? Because he's too holy. That's why we have to have changed bodies. 
Because this body, this earthly body, is contaminated. It can't stand in the presence of God. God won't have it. Yeah, that's, right. that's why it has to be changed. Yeah. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. I want you to understand why God put a subtlety on his return. He don't want nobody to repent. He don't want nobody to feel remorse. He don't want nobody to say, oh, Lord, please forgive me. In a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, that's how serious he is about you being ready when he comes. Yeah. He wants you ready. Because if you're ready, that means you've always been living something. Mm -hmm. But if you ain't ready, you ain't been living what you should have been living. Yeah, yeah. I'm helping somebody. You got to be ready when he comes because it's going to happen in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye, somebody broke it down. One one hundredth of a second. Mm. The rapture going to come. Lay surround. I mean, come on. Bam. We gone. And when they wake up, what happened? All these clothes laying around. Then they're going to get on CNN and say, well, we had a phenomenon. The COVID <laughs> killed all these people and made them disappear. Oh, my God. <laughs> They was the one that took the shot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's when it's on. And y'all gonna be, yeah, yeah, oh, no. yeah, that's right. <laughs> Not all y'all gonna be doing that because the Bible in the 24th chapter said, yeah, say it. men hearts will fail, fail. for fear. Right. People's heart gonna explode. Them that been walking sideways. Them that know that they should have been ready. The Bible said their heart's just gonna start blowing up. Bam, bam, bam. Men's hearts gonna fail for fear because they know their next judgment is hell eternal for the remainder of eternity. Say it. Which is forever. Say it. Mm. The Bible said men's gonna just start dropping. It's gonna be another rapture. It's gonna be folks dying of heart attacks. Because they didn't make their calling an election sure. The Bible tells us that. Make your calling an election sure. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Hell ain't going in heaven. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Hell ain't going in heaven. Heaven is a holy place. Holy place. Ain't no hell up there. It's rest, peace, and tranquility. Hallelujah. Throughout all eternity. With your Lord and Savior. That's what's up there. Ain't no hell up there. Hell raises are in hell. Talk to me. Be ready when he comes. Be ye also ready. Mm -hmm. And here's what the Bible says in the way of getting ready. He said, let them mm -hmm. that have an ear hear. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me tonight? Yeah. Let them that have an ear hear yeah. what the Spirit is saying to the church. Yeah. Yeah. If you're in the church, you better listen to what I'm telling you. Amen. This ain't no game. Mm -hmm. You think it is. It won't be a game when you miss the rapture. Won't be no game then. Play, play. Uh -huh. I can see a lot of folks crying, and that the Bible say gnashing of teeth, mm -hmm. hearts blowing up, cause they know what they were supposed to do and they wouldn't do it. Don't you think when that rain start falling and it got a waist high, folks start panicking? Oh yeah, doesn't leave it. Yet. The words of Noah came to them. He told us it was gonna rain. They went running to the ark. Y'all ain't talking to me. Mm. Banging on the door, but God shut them in. When God shut it in, it's over with. It ain't going to be, oh, no, I feel sorry for your sister. Let the door down. No. No. When God closes it, it's closed. Mm. When God says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, I'm going to come, and it's going to be gone, it's done. Ain't nothing else after that. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Ain't nothing else after that. You lost. You done. You fried duck. <laughs> yes, sir. I talk? Yes, sir. And the voice is going out now. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go that way. Mm -hmm. Just like Noah. God is always giving you a chance to get it right. Amen. Always. Let's read on. Let's read on. Mm -hmm. My question is, how can you say you're a child of God, of the Holy One, but you live in an unholy lifestyle? Don't deceive yourself. Don't do that. Yeah, sure. that, that that's just being silly. You know where you are with God. You know where you stand with God. Get it right. God has gave us all. You know what? 
Jesus loved us so that he died on the cross. Yeah, man. Yes, he did. Yeah. I mean, he took a brutal beating for us. Mm. He didn't have no sin, but he bared the weight of our sins. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Well, that's a, there. It should be enough to say, you know what? He did that for me. Yeah. I can do this for him. Yes. I can yes. live holy mm -hmm. in an unholy world. I can do this. So the Bible gives you the power through the Holy Ghost. Amen. But you got to pay attention to it. First Timothy mm -hmm. 4 and 1. This is where we are. Y'all yes. better stop listening to all these false prophets telling you you can be saved by doing nothing. Yes. It, faith without works is yes. dead. Yes. You got to exercise faith. You got to show God that you have faith. Yes. You can't just talk faith, pray faith. You can't pray something you don't know. You got to exercise your faith. Mm -hmm. What is exercising your faith? Your exercising your faith is denying your flesh. Mm -hmm. When your flesh says, stay home, sit down, go to sleep, right. like it was telling me today. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody talking to me. All oh, right, the pastor right. don't go through that. Yes, he do. All right. Man, the weather was about what seventy last night. Took the bread. I was sitting on my oasis. Lights everywhere, just going. Birds chirping, crickets cricking. Do you hear me, Deaconess? I was sitting back there saying, "I ain't moving." Right. Ain't nobody talking to me. I'm like y'all. I got to I'm in the fly too. I feel like hey. Christian, I'm going to stay home today. I be like that. But I hear the word of God saying, he that, when he comes, will he find me faithful? I got to get up, break through that, Amen. and be faithful to the house of God. Amen. I got to break through that. Amen. Come on now. Because he said, when I come, later, will you know? I find you faithful? Mm -hmm. Have you been consistent in your walk, in your talk, yeah. in your lifestyle? Glory be to God. Yes. First Timothy 4 and 1. Here we go. First Timothy 4 and 1. Yes. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Thank you, Jesus. That in the latter time. Come on. Some shall depart from the faith. Y'all ain't talking to me. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Yes. And doctrines of the devil. Say it again. That seducing Some spirits. shall depart. I want to grab yes. that. Some, some shall, shall depart, depart from what? The faith. The faith. Giving heed. To what? To seducing spirits. And doctrines of devils. Two, go ahead, two. You might as well get two. We might as well hit the home run on it. Speaking lies. Speaking lies. Mm -hmm. Having their conscience seared, seared what? with the high. Y'all know what that means? It don't even bother you when you in sin. Don't bother them. You know you wrong, but it don't bother you because you done got so seared that you, you, you done lost a conscience. Seared. You done lost a holy conscience that this is wrong. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm seeing people that I grew up with in Bethlehem. They don't care where they at now. Yeah, yeah. Their conscience is seared. They yeah. have been playing with the world for so long, they don't care anymore. Yeah. They don't even feel remorse. Mm. It's a travesty. You know to do right, but you didn't allow yourself to be around worldliness so long, so long. you don't even feel the effect. Conscience is seared. Yeah. You keep staying away from the righteousness of God, you won't believe in righteousness. Man, that's right. Keep staying away from it. Keep staying away from the truth. You'll start believing a lie and be damned. Say it, Pastor. Say it. Because your conscience will get dumb to the truth. You won't feel it no more. You won't, you, it won't bother you. I heard him say on Facebook, the more you miss church, the more you miss church. Yeah, that's right. I said, the more you miss church, the less you miss church. It don't bother you anymore. Because your conscience be seared. I don't need that no more. I'm good like I am. I talk to people. I'm good like I am. No, you're not. For the Bible says, no man can save his own self. You will agree with your own self, even in your sin. You know you mess it up, but you won't figure a way. Y'all ain't talking. Let's, let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there. Y'all Y'all looking at me like I don't know what I'm talking about. But the Bible is right. Somebody's wrong, I said the Bible is right. Uh -huh. Somebody's wrong, I said the Bible is right. Somebody wrong, I'm going to say it right. Yes, Come sir. on now. Yes. I'm sorry, but I feel that. I'm trying to help somebody. It's the truth. I'm trying to help somebody. 
Too many of the folks I grew up with ain't living nothing no more. I mean, I watch them. I said, they know that ain't holiness. They know that ain't right. And it don't even affect them anymore. Hanging out with the club, going to the Christian cafe. <laughs> Christian, that don't even make no sense. Christian cafe. You know, we, we, we don't do nothing in there, but we just, you know, we socialize. That's your problem. You socializing with the world. Mm -hmm. I want that scripture. I just looked at it. The devil tried to mess with me. When a man is tempted, don't say, you read that. Where's that at? When a man is tempted, don't let him say he's been tempted by God. I just looked at it. Mm -hmm. But he's tempted how? Through his own lust. It's in there. I just, I know I, I James just passed. James 1 14. What is it? James 1 14. Yeah, yeah, that's it, James. That's it. Let's go there. James 1 14. 1 14. 14, 14, 14 maybe. Yeah, the general epistle of James. Uh -huh. I want to read that real loud. See, don't blame God when you start messing up. Yes, that's it. Don't James blame God. That's you. 13, yeah. 13 14. There it is. 13. She's down on it. Uh, 12. James 1 and 13. 12. Okay, 12. Start at 12. Come uh, on. James 1 and 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Yes. For when he is tried, Come on now. he shall receive a crown of life. Why are you going to let the devil, why are you going to let temptation deny you that crown of everlasting life? Yes. Why are you going to let temptation deny you what God has promised you? A life. crown of life. Yeah. A crown of life. You're going to let temptation mm. deny you because you so weak. You're weak because you don't come to the house of God and get strength. Mm. You're going to miss out on your crown. Yes, don't yes. let nobody take your glory. Amen. Not even you. Come on, somebody. Yeah. They what? Crown of life with uh -huh. us. Which the Lord hath promised. The Lord him. promised that to you. That love him. That love him. Come on. Verse now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me uh -huh. stop there. Mm -hmm. That love him. him. You say you love God. Well, what did he say? How can you say you love me and you don't do what I tell you to do? Okay. He said, keep my commandments. Yeah. Keep them. Yeah. Everybody, I love God. No, you don't. Because you're so disobedient. You're so stiff that You don't love God. Because God told you not to do it and you're doing it anyway. Yeah, see? You don't love God. Stop lying. He said, if you love me, uh -huh. keep my commandments. That's the first sign that you love him, that you do what he tells you. You do what he tells you to do. Yes, People are deceiving themselves. You're deceiving yourself. Mm. You don't love God when you don't do what God tells you to do. Yes, yes. Amen, somebody. Mm -hmm. Read on. Verse 13. Yes. Let no man say when he is tempted, yes. I am tempted of God. That's right. For God cannot be tempted he cannot. with evil. That's right. Neither tempted he any man. God don't play them games. God don't fool with your self-will. No, no, no. He leave that up to you. Right. You want to go to hell? He say, go right on. Choose. Yes. And I'm almost getting that place as a pastor. You want to go to hell? Go to hell right on. Because it ain't going to be me that's got to stand before God. It's going to be you. I told y'all in this church, I'm not going to save you. If you be saved, it's going to be because you want it to be. All I'm going to do is live a life before you, an example, and bring the word to you to help you. But I'm not going to save you. I'm not going to get on a pedestal like some of these preachers have. How y'all think it's them. No. If you be saved, it's by your choice. Your choice. Yeah. If you be lost, it's by your choice. It won't be by mine. I'm not going to make you lost. Mm -hmm. No, sirree. That's on you. Read on, please. Verse 14. Yes. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away That's from it. his own love his own and lust. His own love. Yes. Mm -hmm. When he has what? Yet then when lust has conceived yeah. it, bring it forth sin. Sin, come on. And sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. Bring it forth death. For the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. Later on, but the gift of God is what? Eternal. Eternal life. life. Mm -hmm. Yes, say it. I want eternal life. Amen. I mean, it's the hell I'm living down here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go to hell? Because I'm living in hell? I don't think so. That's only a fool. I'm going to do what I got to do for this little whatever year, 70, 80, 90 years he gave me, so I can gain eternal life. Amen. 
That song says Jane Cleveland had it right, but it's it, it's a it's a song with a twenty it's twist to it. I'll trade a lifetime for just one day in paradise. I want to see Jesus. Yes. And I'm gonna live a life to see Jesus. I'm not gonna let temptation, lust, iniquity, worldliness steal my crime. I'm not gonna be deceived by the carelessness of people today telling me it don't take all that. I'm not listening to that. I know what it takes because I know what the Bible says. Amen. And I'm going to do what the Bible says because I believe this is what I don't believe. I know this is what Jesus laid down for me to do. Now, let's go, let's go to Jude 1 and 3. Mm -hmm. Title tonight, How Can You Go to Heaven Living Like Hell? You can't. It's impossible. Jude 1 and 3. Mm -hmm. I like Jude. Jude, Jude is a small book, but it's a solid book. Yes, yes. Jude 1 and 3. Yes. Beloved, uh -huh. when I gave all diligence to Come write on. unto you of the common salvation, mm -hmm. it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith. Contend for the what? Faith. There was what? Which was once delivered on. unto the saints. Don't digress cause of the world's progress yes, in yes. God. Don't digress. Don't you stop living holy cause the world don't want to. The faith that was once delivered to the saint. The saint. Me and Bishop Harris was talking about this last on the phone yesterday. He said when his daughter passed, his daughter was so confident she was going to see the Lord, she told her sons, y'all stop crying. I'm in good hands. Amen. That's the way you want to die. Amen. She said, Daddy, I'm all right. She said, this is what I live for. Yes. To die. Now, y'all say you want to die. Yeah, yeah. We almost got to shouting on the phone. Then I said, you know what, Bishop Harry? I know that's the truth. Because when my father was in transition, he said, y'all stop praying for me. He said, because where I'm going is better than where I've been. Yes. That's how you want to die. Amen. You want to die with that kind of confidence that when you die, you know you're on your way. Amen. You don't want to die with darkness. Amen. You want to die seeing a light. Amen. Ain't nobody talking to me. Amen. Don't play with your soul. That's right. You ain't going to heaven living like hell. God don't make mistakes. Don't. You make them, but God don't. God wants you to be holy because he's holy. The problem with the church today is we have lost our consciousness for holiness. Yes, yes, that's it. We have lost our consciousness for holiness, elder. We don't care what it looks like anymore, but God do. God say, I want a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. He wants holiness. We can't see Jesus with sin in our lives. Oh, Glory be to God. Right. It ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's hard enough when you're doing all you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. You got one foot in and one foot out. You ain't got a chance. A chance. Mm -hmm. It's hard enough staying safe, being here every day. Right. Y'all ain't helping me. Yeah. You got to work on this thing. Yeah. You got to build your faith through the teach, preaching, Word of God. Mm -hmm. yes. Jude said, don't lose what was given, the faith. Don't, Christian, don't give up on your faith. Mm -hmm. Like you said, Sonny, beautifully, you eloquently explained. You said, it was rough, but I kept seeing the light at the end of that tunnel. Mm -hmm. You said, the closer I got to God, the brighter that light got. Y'all yes. can't tell me Holy Ghost ain't real. Mm -hmm. When she came in here and said, it didn't take her long. Bam, she had it just like that. Because she looked at the light. Mm -hmm. When I tell people to tell you, look for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Look for something. He's looking at you. Mm -hmm. His face is glowing. Because he knows you're trying to come to him. Mm -hmm. He ain't denying you. That's He's right. pulling you Bully. to the light. Yeah. He's saying, I am the light of the world. Y'all yeah. ain't helping me. Amen. Keep Amen. the light. Don't let your light go out. Say that. Don't be one of the five foolish versions yes. thinking you to go to heaven living like hell. Yes. 
It won't happen. Amen. You got to keep your lamp trimmed Amen. with the light. Amen. So when the bridegroom comes, he recognizes you. Because you to live the life with the light. I like how she said that. She said, it was hard. But she said, I kept looking. Kept looking. It was a light. Amen. Mm -hmm. Light always yeah. accomplishes darkness. It could be a little dot in a pure black room, mm -hmm. but you'll see that dot of light. See it. That's right. You'll see that dot of light. Right. It might be a microcosm side, but in a totally black environment, you say, my God, there's a little light right there. Yeah. Power. Right. Come on. Like you look up in the star. Uh, the galaxies ain't nothing but massive darkness, but you see that star. Yes, you, you see stars everywhere. Yes, yes, Come on, somebody. Yes, yes. Light will always penetrate darkness. Always That's right. right. That's why you need to follow it. Because it's going to lead you somewhere. Now, here's the problem, L. Smith, we're doing today. Proverbs 23 and 10. See, they saying it don't take all of that. Mm -hmm. They are de deceiving you. Yeah. It takes all of that and more. Mm -hmm. You got to keep a holiness standard, yes. which is illustrated in the word of God. What does that say? Proverbs 23 and 10. Proverbs 23 I wish I had some in. Holy Ghost folks. Come on here. It says, remove not the old landmark. Remove not what? The old landmark. Yes. And enter not into the field of the fatherless. Of the fatherless. Mm -hmm. What do we say? Oh, the old apostolic, they had us bound. Hmm. They had us locked down. Uh, it, don't, it didn't take all of that. Mm -hmm. It didn't take all that, all that they put on them. Some of it was overkill, but you know what I did today I say? Uh -huh. It was good. Because it kept folks from going over the edge. Oh, yeah. right Some of it was overkill. Because I used to sit down with my father. And he would just look at me and laugh. Dad, you don't have to do all that stuff. I don't see all that in the Bible. He would just laugh. Mm -hmm. He just say, I know what he was saying in my son. You keep living. You're going to see. Because the Bible says a little leaven. Mm -hmm. Leaven a whole lot. When you start letting people do this and do that. Especially... Yes. The Ethiopians. We don't know how to stop it. Yeah, we, we always care stuff too far. <laughs> we go to the limit. We go to the limit. We don't know when to cut it off. Yep. Oh, oh you can wear jewelry, chandeliers. <laughs> you can wear makeup. The joking. <laughs> to the limit. You can wear a little eye dress up. Whoop! That's what you're talking about. Wish you wiped. Right. Y'all get on my nerve. Y'all get on my nerve. Don't know how to do nothing in moderation. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we got a problem with that. We don't know how to just tone it down. We don't know what control is, modestness is. Don't remove the old landmark. Mm -hmm. See, that's your problem. You done removed the old landmark. Now y'all just doing whatever you want to do. Yeah. Yes. You don't care what you do. Yeah. You're glorifying sin in your place that you call the house of worship. Mm -hmm. My God. You're dancing, partying, got all kind of stuff, rappers, gangster gospel rap. I don't even know how you can put that together. Y'all messed up. Y'all messed up. My God. Somebody, my grandfather said, who gonna stand for righteousness yeah. in the last day? Mm. Who gonna declare it? I see what he's talking about now. This generation then almost lost a consciousness for holiness. But there is a remnant. There is something still crying out in the wilderness. Repent for the kingdom of God. Shabbat. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There's still some John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness. 
Repent, for yeah. the kingdom of heaven is in yeah. My God. Some of us are not going to let it happen. Because some of them, are, some of us are not going to let this world and the iniquity in it steal our crown of life. I'm not going to be denied that. Amen. This world is messed up. You think I want to live in a world like this, then go to hell? That's stupid. You foolish. But the enemy got you so coerced up into this Fleshly stuff, all this, I gotta have, I gotta have. Covetousness, idolatry, I mean, me, 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 me. Competing with the Joneses, keeping up with them. And they being used by Satan. 2 Timothy, chapter 2. We going on in. 2 Timothy 3 and 5. This is where we at. This is where we at. Mm -hmm. Second Timothy 3 and 5. Yes, sir. Having a form of godliness. Talk to me. But denying the power thereof. Having a form of godliness. Mm -hmm. Just like the Pharisees. Yeah. Paraded, prayed loud, look at me, had the garments on, churchy garments. Churchy. And what nothing but dead mouth. Mm -hmm. Supposed as Jesus said. You're full of dead man bones. Yes, yes. Full of dead man bones. Ain't nothing in you. Mm. It's all the outward adorning. But you ain't look more saved than a man in the moon. Yeah, you know the church uh, formula, formulas and religious philosophy. You know how to do the churchy stuff. You know how to walk like a churchy person when you get in front of your churchy friends. See? <laughs> You got the church thing down. Even the church talk, you got it down. But Jesus said, you just as empty on the inside. Mm. I don't know you because you don't have my spirit. You don't live like I asked my sheep to live. You got so many perpetrators in the church today, it's ridiculous. Come on here. This is why the people so messed up. Because you got so many leaders that are full of ungodliness. They got no power to cast nothing out of nobody. And I ain't talking about Steve Martin, a leap of faith. Give Sister Brand the mic, uh, uh, a walkie talkie, and go back and interview everybody. Then she tell me this sister called in the red dress. She got a, 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 a not on the shoulder. Lord telling me there's somebody here with a knot on their shoulder. <laughs> Come up here like I'm blowing. Oh my knot down. Here $25. It's foolishness. Foolishness. Mm -hmm. And y'all sitting there watching. Oh, he, he's doing it. Miracles he doing. He going back there, sit with the deacons. He got that jack back here. Come on. In. That was a good show, wasn't it? Yeah, we fooled a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, Pastor, we fooled a lot of people. Y'all just, oh, 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 he just so anointed. Form of godliness, but no power. Then we wonder why folks are constantly getting sick while we couldn't defeat COVID. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Too many perpetrators in the house. That's what you got. When they should have come to a place where he called it a house of prayer mm -hmm. to get healed. Healing station, that's right. We could do it. Y'all ain't talking to me. Right. We could protect the people. Because this power comes through fasting and prayer. Yes. No, you too caught up in your self. Y'all yeah. ain't helping me in here. Amen. That's why you ain't got no power, because you too caught up in you. Mm -hmm. How can you go to heaven living like hell? That's the last part of that verse. 
Yes, sir. It says, denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Yes. From such turn away. Look, we ain't be supposed to be partaking with folks that's got that kind of spirit. A form of godliness. Yeah. Uh, you know, oh, here I go. I'm, I'm going down that street too, because I'm one that will tell it like it is. Because I got the Bible back. Amen. The Bible said to separate yourself from people that have a form mm -hmm. of godliness right. and deny the power. Then I say, read it again. Mm -hmm. Please read it loud so Facebook right. can hear this. It says, verse 5 says, having a form of godliness, yes. but denying the power thereof, yes. from such turn away. From such turn away. Get away from folks like that because they'll mess you up. Amen. Non-denominational churches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my heart is broken. Because I hear some of the former Bethlehemites is joining these non-denominational churches. A form of godliness. My grandfather would turn over in his grave if he sees some of the members doing what they're doing today. That he passed it. This is why I say, I ain't going to get you in heaven. Because if I die, you're going to do what you're going to want to do. Y'all ain't talking to me. Mm -hmm. What's going on? We put too much emphasis on the man and not the man. Amen. This is why folks are not being saved. Say it, say it. He ain't saving you. You saving yourself through the obedience to the word of God. Yeah. Non-denomination church. Do you even know what that means? We have no doctrine. None. If you don't have no doctrine, you don't have no guideline. None. You don't have no Acts 238. None. You don't have not one law, one faith, one baptism. None. You don't even believe in the resurrection of the Holy Spirit None. or Jesus Christ who died and redeemed us. Form of God. Get away from people like that. But y'all run into them. Mm, mm, mm. Because they got an easy doctrine. Yes, that's it. They don't require you to do nothing. Mm. Show up, fluff up, puff up, that's and go you. back home. That's all you got to do. No requirements. No consciousness of guilt or conviction through the teach world. Just let me be happy. Leave me alone. Mm. Let me do what I want to do and just leave me alone. But receive me as a good Christian. Receive me as a good Christian. You ain't no Christian. You the Satan's child. Well, I'm going to go on off for that now. We're going to teach you on something that maybe it make you shout. I don't know. <laughs> the folks don't want to hear the truth anymore. They want you to tell them how to get a house and a car and a husband. Smooth thing. Yeah. <laughs> How to get rich. That's in there too, but you gotta walk right to get it. You gotta walk right. That's right. You gotta live something to get it mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. All good and perfect gifts come from down from the Father. Yes, amen. Good and perfect gifts. And they make you rich. Yeah. Y'all ain't helping me. And they add no sorrow. But you gotta walk right to get that. Amen. Christian, you gotta live something to get them kind of gifts. What does the Bible teach the saints when we're having trouble? I've got seven things here. Probably won't get through all of them. I want to help somebody. Because a lot of y'all get to crying the blues every time something come up in your life as a child of God. Stop crying all the time. Go to the Word of God and get yourself some help. Yes. Yes. Too many crybabies in the church. Yes. You're supposed to have the strength. Ow. The joy of the Lord is my yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you always crying? Sick all in there on time. God can't use you always broken down. Every day you wake up, oh God, my knee, my neck, my shoulder, my brain. Come on now. <laughs> Give me a break. How in the world are you going to be able to say, I can do all things and everything broke on you? Overcome. Mm -hmm. Every morning you sick. 
Every morning you tired. Every morning you are afraid. God can't use you like that. So, what is one of the things we need to do? Let's go to Luke. Ooh. This is what, I'm glad we on a three-day fast. I'm glad I've been praying every day because that's, maybe that's why I'm teaching like I'm teaching tonight. Because somebody need to get right with God. Somebody need to get strong with God. Yeah. I'm so tired of weak saints. There's no reason for us to be weak. I always belly aching. I always, I'm down and depressed. Come on now. Damn. Whatsoever man thinketh, so is they or them or him or her. You got to stop thinking you beat up or you are beat up. That's right. You know, they said the mind is so powerful. If you think you got cancer, you're going to get cancer even if you don't have it. Y'all ain't helping me. Because the Bible is right. Somebody's wrong. Whatsoever you think, that's what you become. If you think you're worthless, you will be worthless. Luke, this is what a lot of y'all need to do, and I hope you're doing it. I'm trying to get something done through this fast, y'all. We are loaded. I mean, we are loaded. We are loaded. Amen. I want God to bless everything we going to do. Amen. And I don't want saints bailing out all the time. Let's well, that's, that's, oh, let's go on. Uh, <laughs> 18 and 1. Mm -hmm. Luke 18 and 1? Yes. Mm -hmm. Luke 18 and 1. Right there. Luke 18 and 1. Yes. And he spake a parable unto them. Yes. To what this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. That's the problem. We're yeah. not praying enough. Yeah. And I'm not talking about a quick prayer. Let's pray. I mean, I told Israel, I said, it was three of us in here. Sister Brand, Deaconess, Little, and myself. But you would have thought it was a thousand people in here praying. I, I mean, the spirit fell in this place. We were supposed to leave, but we didn't leave. Because mm. the, the anointing was so high. I mean, we, it, it just felt, and I said, Lord, have mercy. If we could get 20 to pray like that, we'll, we'll turn this whole neighborhood upside down. Amen. Come on, somebody. Men should always pray. When you're having trouble, don't cry. Pray. If God is your God and you live in something, you can go. He said, you can ask what you will in my name, and it shall be done unto you. Do you know God gets no joy out of the people of God broken all the time? Because what's your testimony? If I'm trying to get saved from being broke and hurting and paid down, and I'm looking at you. How am I gonna get something from you if that's who you what you are? Yeah. Come on. God don't get no glory out of people always murmuring and complaining. Always down in their spirit. Always, oh, it's me. God don't get no victory out of that. Oh, God. He yeah. told Moses in the will, he said, I'm sick of them. Mm -hmm. All they do is murmur and complain. I'm giving them manna from heaven. I gave them shoes that never wore out. Yeah. I'm taking them to the promised land. They still he said, I'm going to kill every one of them. None of them going to reap the benefits of Canaan land. I'm going to wipe them out. God don't get no pleasure out of people complaining and sick all the time. Amen. Right. Gird up yourself. Yeah. Do something. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. might. Yeah. That's where God gets the victory, being strong. Even in the midst of adversity, he said, Man's extremity is God's opportunity. When you go through something, that makes you stronger. Amen. You ought to get glorified like Paul. He said, I glorify my infirmities. Yeah. Yeah. I don't boo-hoo and cry. I glorify them. Because yeah. I know strength is coming in that. It's coming. Yeah. Ain't nobody talking to me. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nobody talking to me. Yeah. See, I've been praying. That when I get to praying, I'm going to get to telling you something. Because God speaks to me. Some of y'all too weak. Some of y'all too weak. You shouldn't be like that in God. Come on now. Put yourself together. Put your holy garments on. Bring it up. He said, even in the spirit of heaven is put on the garment of what? Praise. Praise. Yes, yes. Ain't nobody talking to me. Hallelujah. That's what he's looking for. God gets no victory out of people murmuring and complaining all the time. Every day. I'm sick. I'm depressed. Come on. Every day. Every day. Elder Smith, every day? I'm wrong now. Do you ever, Elder Smith, do you ever smile on purpose? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything good in your life? Yeah. Come on. There's got to be something. 
child of God. But you know, woe is me. Oh, God. <laughs> Come on now. God don't get nothing out of that. And then you, I'm going to tell people about Jesus. What are you going to tell them, sad sack? <laughs> what are you going to tell them? Be miserable, just like me. Be always down, just like me. That's what you got on, won't it? That's what they're going to tell you. Come on, somebody. Psalms. Thank you, David. 119 and, and 71. This is why we should have the trouble. First, pray, and let's see what David did. Come on. 119 and 71. Psalms 119? Yes, 119.71. 119.71. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says, it is good for me that I have been afflicted. David said it was good. That this I is how mm -hmm. a child of God handles affliction. It was good. good. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't talking to me. It was good I had trouble. Uh -huh. It was good that I was afflicted. Why, uh -huh. David? That I, I may learn thy statue. Come on. That I may learn your statue. Affliction bring us into the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And when we're in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. Yes, yes. Talk, talk, Holy Ghost. Yes. Affliction brings us into the presence of God. And they say in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. Yes, yes. They didn't do it. David praised his way through his affliction. He yes. celebrated them, just yes. like Paul. What you do? Come on, somebody. Yes. Yes. He didn't let his afflictions beat him. He beat them. Amen. Amen. Nobody saying that. Amen. 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 Yes, Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians mm -hmm. 4 and 6. We all over tonight. But I hope you Bible scholars ain't got no problem with it. Mm -hmm. You got a form. All you got to do is go to the search thing. Show you real quick. Second <laughs> Corinthians. Four, six. Six and four, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, six, six and four. Second mm -hmm. Corinthians six and four. Yes. But in all things, come on. Approving ourselves as the minister of God. Yes. In much patience. Come on. In affliction. Uh -huh. In necessities. And in, in distresses. God's ministers celebrate these things. Mm -hmm. These things ain't supposed to defeat you. Yes. Come on, y'all. I'm trying to help somebody. This is how saints handle trouble. Amen. They look at it as a reward. Yes, yes. Not a defeat. Uh -huh. yes. 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 Right. Talk, talk, preach, teach, help me teach. You got to stop using those things to allow Satan to make you look less than who you are in God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Right, that's the best way I can say it. Come on, somebody. Yes. This joy that I have. Am I talking right? Yeah. The world didn't what? Give it Give it and it can't what? Because it, it didn't come from the world, it came from God. That's right. Yeah. As ministers of God, that's who you are. Yeah. You ministers of God. You celebrate these things, right? Mm -hmm. Patience. How you do it? Affliction. Necessity. Yes. Stress. Yeah. When, mm -hmm. when the things get tight, you get right. You get up. You yes, start yes, celebrating, yes, shouting. Yes. Praise your way through it. Come on, somebody. Yes, yes. We just trying to help you. We just trying to help you. Romans 8, 26. Just trying to help you. When trouble comes, this is what the saints do. We go to these scriptures. Romans 8 and 26. Mm -hmm. What does it say? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our bodies. Yes. Mm -hmm. For we know not what we should pray for mm -hmm. as we ought. Mm -hmm. But the Spirit itself Thank makes you, intercessions for us with groaning which cannot be up. Even when you can't say it, because you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is putting that thing out there for Put it you. Out there. Yes, sir. Holy Ghost is telling you it's going to be all right. Yeah. Holy Ghost saying God's got it. Yeah. Holy Ghost saying you're going to beat this thing. That's what. That's how the saints react. Yeah. When we don't know what to say, the Holy Ghost takes over and starts saying, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. You're going to win. I know they said you're going to get your case and they're going to take you out. Holy Ghost said, that ain't going to happen. Y'all ain't helping me. I know they said you had a dot on in you. 
and they saying it's cancerous or pollenous or whatever, the Holy Ghost saying it ain't there. And you going like this. See, I believe God. I believe God. I believe. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Glory. Come on here. Yeah. And that's how you approach trouble. Yes, you let the spirit kick in. When you you say, well, I'm just going to sit here. You have to do that sometimes. You be going through so hard, you just say, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to wait on Jesus. Wait on that's Jesus. what my grandma just said. I'm just wait on Jesus. Yes, sir. I'm going to just wait on Jesus. When you don't know what to say, just keep your mouth shut. Let the Holy Ghost do the talking. And wait on Jesus. Just keep rocking. My mom got to say, she said, just mark time. Mm -hmm. Just mark time. Sit there and wait on the Holy Ghost to do that thing for you. Because if you open your mouth, you get depressed. Just shut up and let the Holy Ghost do it. Yeah, <laughs> when I don't know what to utter, let the Spirit make intercessory for you. That's what it said. Is that what it said? Amen. I hope I'm helping somebody. Psalms 30. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. We got to move. We got four minutes. Psalms 30 and 4. Mm -hmm. 30 and 4. Yes, sir. Psalms 30 and 4 says, Sing unto the Lord, yes. O ye saints of his, mm -hmm. and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. When you going, when trouble comes, start singing unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And remember the righteousness of God. Yes. And you are the righteous seed of God. Yeah. Amen. God ain't going to let you go down like that. Mm -hmm. He got your back. God ain't going to let you go down. He got your back. If you're the righteous seed of God, all you got to start remembering, as we say all the time, when I think of the goodness of Jesus yeah. and all oh. that he's done for me, yeah. my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I feel that thing. I feel yeah. that thing. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Closing out. 15 and 57 yes. reads, but thanks be to God mm -hmm. which giveth us the victory through who? Through the Lord Jesus Christ. And somebody said it. We was talking on the phone, me and Bishop Perry. He says, when you die in the Lord or you in the Lord, uh -huh. you don't lose. Ain't losing. You in a win-win situation no matter what happens. God gives us the victory through Christ Jesus. Yes. We don't lose. Because we got Jesus on our side. Amen. We don't lose. Amen. Even when it looks like we losing, we ain't losing. Come on, somebody. Yes, this scripture can't lie. Victory through who? Christ. Do y'all believe that? Amen. Do y'all believe that? Yes, yes, Try to help somebody. Do y'all believe it? Amen. Quit walking around like sad sack. <laughs> I would like someday to you call the pastor and say, Pastor, I'm so crazy in love with the Lord. I'm feeling great. Good, good, good. Yes. Give me a sister brand. I feel like shouting on this text message. Y'all ain't helping me. So the brand will throw that tank down. I'll be like, how about Shahaya? God moving. Tell me something good. Y'all ain't helping me. If I have to get enough wall messages, surely. Type me something good, Pastor. You know what? I woke up this morning with my mind. I oh, shut my heart. Yes. Stay mm -hmm. on Jesus. Y'all yeah. ain't helping me in here. Thank you, Sister Grant. Thank you. Type something good. Yeah. Pastor, you know, ain't it a nice sunny day? Jesus woke me up. I got up on the wake up list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got another <laughs> opportunity to do something for the Lord. Shut my heart. Shut up on Jose. How you know? Come on now, Holy Ghost. The Lord is. Good. Yes, yes, yes. Mercy endureth forever. Real quick, for Facebook, I'm going to just call these scriptures. We can't do an expiratory on them. We're just going to call them Job 36 and 11. 2 Corinthians 1 and 6. Hebrews 10 23. Psalms 27, 14, Romans 8, 25. Concluding with Psalms 46 and 1, 2 Corinthians 4, 4 17. I'm going to go through them real quick again before we go off the air. These are the scriptures we use to help us when trouble comes. Yes. Psalms 119, 71. 
2 Corinthians 6 and 4. Romans 8, 26. Psalms 30 and 4. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Job 36 and 11. 2 Corinthians 1 and 6. Hebrews 10, 23. Psalms 27, 14. Romans 8, 25. Psalms 46 and 1. 2 Corinthians 4, 17. Amen. Dear gracious Father, we honor you today. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the impartation of your word. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the clarity which is in your description and in the word. Lord, let us know we got to be holy, unspotted, separated from the world. And Lord, we thank you for what you've given us to fortify us even when trouble comes. Lord, to build us up on our most holy of holy faith. Lord, that we may contend for the faith that was once given unto the saints. Lord, we appreciate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.